I'm back, and I just wanted to go back to Ecclesiastes 3. For there, in verse 17, I thought in my heart, God will bring to judgment both the righteousness and the wicked. For there will be a time for every activity and a time for every deed. A time for every activity and a time for every deed. And this is what I'm saying is, we get we come back to the fact that are we doing the will of God? And isn't it fantastic where you can have a couple that get together, a sing, both single people get together and they say they want to share the rest of their life with. And they can actually make a blueprint and say this is how they want their life to be. But remember, when they're a couple together, they've got to encourage one another. They've got to help one another. They've got to communicate. They've got to respect one another. They have to consider one another. They've got to love one another. Communication is the key. Communication is the key to Jesus Christ. Communication is the key to actually listening to Jesus. And sometimes we're too busy in our lives to actually listen to the Holy Spirit. Because through the Holy Spirit, and this is what happens, is a two-part prong to this. You accept Jesus Christ into your life. You sacrifice your life to God. You give your life to God. Your old, your old self passes away and your new self, new self, what your new self is reborn in Jesus Christ. Your new self is reborn in Jesus Christ and your old self passes away. And then, see, there's a time for every deed and there's a time for every activity. The activity was the time that you gave your life to Jesus Christ and the deed that you did is you brought someone to Jesus Christ. That could be a certain deed that you did. But then you'll also come down the front and said, look, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus. I want to accept the Holy Spirit into my life. Do you know, you, you don't need to go to church to accept Jesus Christ into your life. You can do that in your bedroom. You can do that in, in the privacy of your home. You can do that in your car. You can ask another Christian to help you do that if the Christian is strong enough to do that with you. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go on to Proverbs 29. So if we go on to, to, to Proverbs, Proverbs... Uh, Daniel, Matthew, but see, this is what I was talking about. When, when you, when, you, when you, I'm just looking up for the scripture of Proverbs. But when you, um, when you have um, a family in your life, you can't have doubt. You know, one partner can't have doubt and the other partner can't have doubt because if there's going to be doubt, it's not going to work. You've got to have the positive of Jesus Christ. You've got, if, if you're both Christians, you've got to be able to say, Hey, Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender my wife, I surrender my future partner to you, Lord Jesus, and I ask her to work on her heart, Lord Jesus. The same thing you can do for the, for the, for the man as well. You know, and, and really, really... You know, we need to realise this, that it, 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 it doesn't happen on doubt. It doesn't happen on doubt. It doesn't happen on doubt. It happens on love. It happens on love and respect for one another. It happens on, on, on the things of this world where both people love one another. You know, if if you're if one partner is saying, well, I, I think this marriage is going to work. I think we can have a marriage. I think we can make babies. I think we can have a good life together. If only we both not doubt, and we both look at the love of Jesus Christ and be Christ-like and do the will of God. That, that that's also um, important. But if we go to Proverbs 31 and then we we look at um, from 10, the wife as a noble character. A wife of a noble character who can find she is worth more than rub, rub rubies. Her husband falls confident, full confident in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm. All the days of her life she selects the wool, the flax, the works with the eagle hand. She is like the merchant ship, the merchant ship, ships, bringing her food from the afar. She gets up while she, it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it out of her earnings. She plants vineyards. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading are profitable 
and her lamp does not go out at night. If her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers, she opens the arms to the poor and extended her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for them are clothed in scarlet. She makes covering for her bed and she clothes with the fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected to the city gate where it takes a seat among the elders and the land she makes linen and garments and sells them and supplies to the merchants with sashes. If she clothes with strength and dignity, she can laugh at the days of come. This is what I'm saying, the power of laughter. This is what I was mentioning about before. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instructions is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of the, the idolists. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women a noble thing, but her surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, but beauty is flattering. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise to the city gate. Isn't that fantastic? You know, um, her husband also praises her. Yes, her husband should praise her, praise his wife and encourage his wife. You know, and, and these things that that are done in the godlessness and the like of the likeness of Christ and the will of God, what happens? The children can see that and that passes on to the children. And the children do vice versa. This is in Proverbs 31. So when you are looking for a soulmate, you're looking for a noble character. And I think that anyone that I speak to, any woman that I speak to, I believe they are noble characters. Any woman that I can speak to about as a friend or just as a friend, they are noble characters. You can see that in women, that they are noble characters. And you can praise God and you can thank God, but also she's clothed with strength and dignity. She's clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. Isn't that fantastic that when you can laugh at the face of what's to come? That is so good, isn't it? That we can praise God and we can look at God and we can praise God and say, thank you, God. Thank you for my family. Thank you for the children that I have. Thank you for the loving children. Thank you for the loving family, Lord Jesus. And that we can go on from there. It is so good when, when we are doing what God has commanded us to do. I'll go to Malachi 4.6. So we're just going to go to Malachi 4.6 in a minute and I'll stop it there and we'll go to 7 next.